This is Aaron Boma, Military Specialist for Carleton County. I'm going to talk to you about the second phase of Operation Wither and Bung, which was Nord, the invasion of Norway, which began on the same day um, of the invasion of, and in, in, even the day before, is planned on April 8th, April 9th, the invasion of Denmark and then, of course, Norway. Uh, so here, we're going to talk to you about uh, the invasion uh, the, of Norway. Um, so following a meeting with uh, Wittgen Quisling from Norway on the 14th of December, Hitler turned his attention to Scandinavia, convinced of the threat posed by the Allies to the iron ore supply. Hitler ordered uh, Oberkommando von Ver der Wehrmacht, Armed Forces High Command, OKW, to begin preliminary planning for an invasion of Norway. The preliminary plan was named uh, Study Nord and called for only one army division directly. Between uh, the 14th and 19th of January, the Kriegsmarine developed an expanded version of this plan. They decided upon two key factors that surpassed, uh, that surpassed was, uh, was that this surpass was essential to reduce the threat of Norwegian um, resistance. So they needed more troops than the original plan. And British intervention is it to prevent much British intervention with uh, a major invasion. Uh, a quick uh, strike fast and under the element of surprise. So the second to, um, the two key factors that surprise was essential, of course, and the second um, was to use faster German warships rather than comparatively slow merchant ships. To as troops, of course, troop transports could only go at a speed of maybe six, seven knots, maybe not even. That would allow all targets to be occupied simultaneously, which was which was impossible if transport ships were used, which traveled only, of course, very slowly. The only plan, uh, the, the new plan, sorry, called for a full army corps. So not just an army division, but a full army corps, the new plan, including a mountain division, an airborne division, a motorized rifle brigade, and two infantry divisions. The target objectives of the force were the Norwegian capital of Oslo and nearby population centers, Bergen, Narvik, Tromsø, <clears throat> Trudlum, Christiansand and Stavanger. The plan also called for the swift capture of the kings of Denmark and Norway in the hope that this would trigger a rapid surrender. So the inversion, the German invasion of Norway on the 9th of April uh, 1940, the same as, as uh, Denmark, was the first sign that the phony war period that had followed the, the Polish campaign in 1939 was coming to an end. In 1939, after more than 100 years of peace, Norway did not possess a large standing army, and her government considered that effective national defense against a major power was impossible. The Russian invasion of Finland um, in 1939 was a severe shock, and during the, the winter, a sizable Norwegian force was established in northern Norway. After Russia signed an armistice in, in March 1940 with the Finns, uh, this force was disbanded. When the Germans invaded on April 8th, the Norwegian army uh, was only partially mobilized and in the process of training new recruits, uh, April 8th, April 9th. But despite these disadvantages, Norway put up a stubborn fight and it was two months before the country was completely overrun and the British, French, and Polish contingents uh, evicted. The government finally capitulated on 9th of June 1940. Despite bitter fighting, casualties had been uh, light. The Norwegians lost just uh, 1,335 killed and wounded. Small contingents of Norwegians managed to escape to England, while others crossed into Sweden. King Hakon the Seventh, uh, Hakon the Seventh was commander in chief of a basically uh, territorial army, which, when fully mobilized, was to have uh, had a strength of about a hundred thousand men. 
almost uh, similar to the size of the Canadian Army. A small uh, cutter of regular uh, officers and NCOs was responsible for running the army and for the training of conscripts. The country was divided into six military districts or commands, with their headquarters in Halden, Oslo, Christiansand, Bergen, Trudhelm, and Hersted. Hersted. Each command was initially uh, expected to field a brigade, later to be expanded to a division and garrison and, <clears throat> and ancillary troops. An infantry division comprised a staff, uh, two or three uh, infantry regiments, um, either a field artillery regiment or a mountain artillery battalion. The second infantry division in Oslo included the Royal Guard and a cavalry regiment. The fifth and sixth infantry divisions had, in addition, a pioneer and flying battalion. An infantry regiment had a strength of 3,750 men, armed with Craig Jorgensen M. 1894 rifles. The Craig Jorgensen <coughs> is a very good rifle, and I've mentioned it before. It's a semi-side loading um, rifle. You have to load it each round individually, and but then they came up later on with uh, certain clips that you could load in. And um, so it's loaded basically from the side and then pushed in center um, through a kind of a special like a sleeve. Um, it's a very good, very accurate rifle. Um, so some infantry regiments, some, or some regiments had a bicycle company for constant duties which in winter became a ski troop. So here we have, of course, uh, the British Infantry, uh, 148th Infantry Brigade, uh, 146th Allied Troops in Arabic, and this is the location here. <clears throat> and here we have, of course, uh, German, um, the German troops here. I'm trying to see if that is, yeah, those are the German forces there and pushing inward um, and then this is here just showing the, the British brigades and the troops there and the major battles of, of Narvik which is up here um, it's an interesting map so the army um, about 100,000 men so six infantry regiments two to three each with 3,700 150 men, total men, uh, 100,000 in total, but machine guns, uh, you know, 264 to 396, uh, light machine guns, 6.5 millimeter Madsen guns, uh, the Danish, uh, 72 to 108 heavy Colt Browning M29 machine guns, so 16 to 24 heavy mortars, uh, artillery, 24 to, 30, to 36, 16 to 24 Kongsberg 120 millimeter field howitzers, and 12 Earnhardt um, 75 millimeter M1901 field guns. Anti-aircraft guns, Madsen 20 millimeter um, heavy machine guns, Kongsberg 75 millimeter 100 and, uh, sorry uh, M1932 anti-aircraft guns. And that's that's what we that's what they had for heavy um, firepower um, for their army. If you're talking about uh, infantry regiments, and 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 most of them are just uh, light conscripts, uh, Craig Jorgensen rifles. Norwegian Air Force. By midday on 9th of April 1940, the German armed forces had occupied nearly all the airfields. Uh, and um, seaplane bases no south of Narvik, and most of Norway's semi-modern, uh, semi-modern fighters, uh, Gloucester Gladiators, had been destroyed in the defense of Oslo on the opening day of the German invasion. <coughs> Thereafter, the Air Force took little part in the fighting. The Air Force was organized in three flights, one each of uh, fighters, bombers, and reconnaissance aircraft, with a total uh, of 76 aircraft and 940 men, and was intended to play a ground support role. <coughs> the, 
to the Norwegian Navy on the 8th of April, 1940, the day before the German invasion, the direct invasion. Um, 5,200 officers and men were serving, serving in the Navy and its air, air service. Despite the fact that the bulk of the vessels of the Norwegian Navy were obsolete, they gave a good account of themselves during the hostilities with Germany. Indeed, during the fighting, most of them were put on or put out of action or sunk. There were initially 113 vessels comprising two small armored cruisers, 10 mine layers, 10, 7 destroyers, 3 large uh, turret class torpedo boats, 14 smaller torpedo boats, 9 submarines, 8 mine sweepers, 9 patrol boats, and 49 vessels converted to patrol boats. Only 13 of these made uh, British ports after capitulation of Norway. On the 22nd of April 1940, while fighting was still in progress, the Norwegian government decided to requisition the whole Norwegian merchant fleet um, still under the, its control. Um, a thousand ships, totaling four million tons, manned by 30,000 seamen, uh, were s saved for the Allied cause and played an indispensable part in the Battle of the Atlantic. On the uh, 22nd, on the 20, sorry, the 21st of February 1940, command of the operation was given to General Nicholas von Falkenhurst. He had fought in Finland during the First World War and was familiar with Arctic warfare, but he was to have command only of the ground forces, despite Hitler's desire to have a unified command. The final plan was codenamed Operation Weiserenburg, uh, Weiserenbung, sorry, um, exercise on the Weiser. On um, 27th January 1940, the ground forces would be um, of the, hold on, the ground forces would be of the 21st Army Corps, including the 3rd Mountain Division, and five infantry divisions, none of the later having yet been, been tested in battle. The first phase would consist of three divisions for the assault, with the remainder to fall in the next wave. Three companies of paratroopers would be used to seize airfields. The decision to also send the second mountain division was made later. Almost all U-boat operations in the Atlantic were to be stopped for the submarines to aid in the operation. A very available submarine, including uh, some training boats, were used as part of Operation uh, Hartmut in support of Weserenbung. Initially, the plan was to invade Norway and to gain control of Danish airfields by diplomatic means, but Hitler issued a new directive on the 1st of March and that called for the invasion of both Norway and Denmark. This came at the insistence, the insistence of the Luftwaffe to capture fighter bases and sites for air warning stations. The, 30, the 31st Corps was formed for the invasion of Denmark, consisting of two infantry divisions and the 11th Motorized Brigade. The entire operation would be supported by the 6th... Um, uh, 10th Air Corps, consisting of some 1,000 aircraft of various types. Here we have, it looks like, uh, HE-111 bombing uh, Norwegian warship. That's a book, I think. Yeah. In February, the British destroyer HMS Cossack boarded uh, the German transport ship Altmark while in Norwegian waters thereby violating Norwegian neutrality. Uh, rescuing POWs also held in violation of Norwegian neutrality. The Aldmark was obliged to release them as soon as she entered neutral territory. Hitler regarded this UK response to German violation of Norwegian neutrality as a clear sign that the UK was willing to violate Norwegian neutrality and so became even more strongly committed to the invasion. On the 12th of March, the United Kingdom 
decided to send an expeditionary force um, to Norway just as the Winter War was winding down. The expeditionary force began boarding on 13th of March, but it was recalled and the operation cancelled. With the end of the Winter War, <clears throat> that is with the end of the Winter War, instead the British cabinet voted to proceed with the mining operation in Norwegian waters, followed by troop landings. The first German ships to set sail for the invasion, um, they were setting sail on uh, 3rd of April. Two days later, the long-planned Operation Wilfred was put into action, and the Royal Navy detachment, led by the battlecruiser HMS Renown, left Scapa Flow to mine Norwegian waters. The minefields were laid in the um, Vestforden uh, in the early morning of April 8th. Operation Wilfred was over, but later that day the destroyer HMS uh, Glowworm detached uh, on the 7th of April to search for a man uh, lost overboard, was lost in action to the German heavy cruiser Admiral Hipper. Uh, and two destroyers belonging to the German invasion fleet. On 9th of April, the German invasion was underway, and the execution of Plan R4 was promptly started. So here we have uh, Denmark, and then pushing into Norway. <clears throat> At 0400 hours, 9th of April 1940, the German ambassador to Denmark, uh, Cecil von Hirth, uh, Renth, uh, Renth Fink, okay, C Cecil von Renth Fink called the Danish Foreign Minister Peter Munch and requested a meeting with him. When the two men met 20 minutes later, uh, Renth Fink declared that, the, that German troops were then moving in to occupy Denmark to protect the country from. Franco-British attack. The German ambassador demanded that Danish resistance cease immediately, and that contact to be made uh, contact be made between Danish authorities and the German armed forces. If the demands were not met, the Luftwaffe would bomb the capital Copenhagen. So here is the German invasion of Denmark and Norway, 1940. <clears throat> we all know about the Denmark invasion. And I'm talking about the uh, the same day. Norway, Bergen, Kristiansen, Trondheim, and Narvik. Major major uh, impact zones, and of course Oslo. And parach parachutist units in Oslo. Outside. The operation's military headquarters was Hotel. Esplanade in Hamburg, where orders were given to, among others, the air units involved in the invasion. Norway was important to Germany for two primary reasons, as a base for naval units, including U-boats, to harass Allied shipping in the North Atlantic, and to secure shipments of iron ore from Sweden uh, through the port of Narvik. The long northern coastline was an excellent place to launch U-boat operations into the North Atlantic to attack British commerce. Germany was dependent on iron ore from Sweden and was worried with justification that the Allies would attempt to disrupt these shipments, 90% of, or, or, of, of which originating from Narvik. The invasion of Norway was given to the 21st Corps, Army Corps under General Nicholas von Falkenhurst and consisted of the following main units. 69th Infantry Division, 163rd Infantry Division, 181st Infantry Division, 196th Infantry Division, 214th Infantry Division, and 3rd Mountain Division. Each one of those is about uh, 15, 16,000 men. <clears throat> the initial invasion force was transported in several groups by ships of the Kriegsmarine. 
Battleship Scornhorst, uh, Gunasu, Gin, Jinsenu, sorry, Jinsenu, um, as distant, of course, the battleships are distant cover, plus 10 destroyers with 2,000 mountaineering troops under General Edward, um, Edward, <clears throat> Edward Dito to Narvik. Now, these ships were going to Narvik, uh, these battleships, Gunasu, uh, Gensenau and Scornhost. Um, moving to Narvik. Heavy cruiser Admiral Hipper and four destroyers with 1,700 troops were going to trot him. Light cruisers Colm and Kongsberg, Konigsberg, uh, artillery training ship uh, Burmese and Skelboot, um, and of course mothership Carl. These were all going to um, different and different units uh, or different uh, ports in um, Norway. Skornhorst was a major German capital ship, of course, alternatively described as a battleship or battle cruiser of Nazi Germany's Kriegmarine. Um, she was the, the lead ship of her class, which included one other ship, uh, Gensenau. The ship was built at the Kriegsmarine uh, Werft um, dockyard in Wilmshaven, which is in northern Germany. She was laid down on the 15th of June 1935 and launched a year and four months later on the 3rd of April 1936. Completed in January 1939, the ship was armed with a main battery of nine 28 centimeter 11 inch guns, uh, C34 guns with multiple uh, turrets. <clears throat> with, uh, sorry, C-34 guns and three triple turrets. Plans to replace these weapons with six 38-centimeter, 15-inch guns, SKC-34 guns, and twin turrets were never carried out. Very large ship. <clears throat> Gensenau uh, was a German capital ship, alternative, alternatively described as a Battleship and battle cruiser of Nazi Germany's uh, Kriegsmarine was the second vessel of her class um, after Skarnhorst, which um, the ship was built at the uh, Dutch Work uh, dockyard in Kiel, which is another major uh, port in Germany. She was laid down, in, of course, in 1935, launched on December 8, 1936, and completed in, in uh, May 1938. 20, so 28 centimeter, it's 11 inch guns, C-34 guns, and, and 38 centimeter, uh, 15 inch guns. Amazing. A lot of firepower. Shortly after noon on 8th of April, the clandestine uh, German troop transport uh, Rio de Janeiro uh, was sunk off Lillesand by the Polish uh, submarine Orzo part of the Royal Navy's second submarine flotilla. However, the news of the sinking reached the appropriate levels uh, of officialdom in uh, Oslo too late to do much more than uh, trigger a limited last-minute alert. Late in the evening of 8th of April 1940, uh, Counts Group 5 was spotted by the Norwegian guard vessel Pole 3. Uh, Pole 3 was uh, fired at. Her captain, uh, Liv Weldon uh, Olsen, became the first Norwegian killed in action during this invasion. The German ships sailed up to uh, Oslo Fjord, Os the Oslo Fjord, leading to the Norwegian capital, reaching uh, the Dorbuck Narrows. Um, <clears throat> In the early morning of 9th of April, the gunners at Oskarberg Fortress fired on the landing ship uh, Blaucher, which had been uh, illuminated by spotlights at about 0415. Two of the guns uh, were used were 48-year-old German Krupp guns, nicknamed Moses, uh, Moses and Aaron, of 280mm 11-inch caliber. Within two hours, the badly damaged ship, unable to maneuver in the narrow fjord from multiple artillery and torpedo hits, sank with heavy 
It was a very heavy loss of life, totaling 600 to 1,000 men. That was the, one of the first major bloods to the, to the Kriegsmarine. The now obvious threat from the fortress and uh, the mistaken belief that mines had contributed to the sinking delayed the rest of the naval invasion group along, uh, long enough for the royal family, um, the cabinet and members of the parliament, the Norwegian parliament, uh, to be evacuated, along with the, the national treasury. On their flight uh, northward uh, by special train, uh, the court encountered the Battle of uh, Mr. Coggan and bombs at uh, Ulverum and uh, Nebersgrund, Nebersgrund. As the Norwegian king and his legitimate government were uh, not captured, which is luckily for them, Norway never, sur uh, never surrendered in a legal sense to the Germans, leaving the quizzling government um, illegitimate. The Norwegian government in exile based in London remained, therefore, an allied nation in the war. At 7.06 uh, p.m. on the 7th, on the 7th uh, Norwegian fighters uh, are sent uh, into battle to combat a wave of 7 to 80 enemy planes. And uh, here they are carpet bombing. Um, it looks, I'm not sure where it is. But German airborne troops landed at Oslo Airport. Um, Fern, uh, Fern, Fernbu Christiansen Airport, uh, Krivik and, and Sola Air Station. These are different air stations around Oslo, so they're bombing uh, around Oslo. The later constituting the first um, opposed paratrooper attack in history. <clears throat> so the first opposed paratrooper attack in history. Now I did think it was Holland, but uh, it was Norway first, and then the largest major, uh, the largest offensive airborne attack in history before um, um, D-Day was the largest one was in Holland, I believe. Coincidentally, uh, Franklin Quisling's radio affected a coup d'état at 7:30 p.m. on 9th of April. Um, that was, um, <clears throat> so these were just this more information about the, it's, uh, this is confusing here. <clears throat> One of the major leaders, Reinhard Heydrich, uh, German leaders, um, uh, eventually he was protector of the Reich, landed, um, at, um, Kravik, another, and when this was early in the major invasion. Um, <clears throat> at 8.30 p.m., the destroyer Eger was attacked and sunk outside uh, the Vanger by 10 Junkers Ju-88 bombers. After it was sunk, the German cargo ship MS Rhoda, Rhoda was also sunk. Uh, Rhoda was carrying a concealed uh, bunch of ammunition and weapons cargo, a bunch of weapons parts and cargo. Cities, towns, uh, Bergen, uh, Stavanger, uh, Egersund, Chris, uh, Christian Sand, Arendel, Norton, uh, Trudheim, and Narvik at, uh, were attacked and occupied within 24 hours. Uh, heroic but wholly ineffective. Uh, the, it was a heroic but wholly ineffective stand by the Norwegian armored uh, coastal defense ships. Uh, Nor and and Eggsfoot at Narvik, of course, that defended themselves. Both ships torpedoed and sunk. Uh, they fought heroically, but were sunk with a great loss of life. So the first battle of Narvik, the Royal Navy versus the Kriegsmarine, uh, was on April 9th. The German force took Narvik and landed uh, the 2,000 Mountain Infantry. But a British uh, naval counterattack by the modernized battleship HMS Warspite and a flotilla of destroyers over several days succeeded in sinking all ten German destroyers uh, once they ran out of fuel and ammunition. 
which is a major, this is one of Germany's first major defeats. So, uh, Quislings, um, radio affected coup d'etat, that was on April 9th. That was an, another first of this war, uh, which he will eventually lead the, the, he will lead the puppet government in Norway uh, during the uh, Nazi occupation. <clears throat> Devastating bombing uh, of towns, uh, Nebursund, Elzerum, and is uh, and Elson, uh, and and mold a uh, Christian son, uh, Steinker, uh, Narms, Narmsos, Bordeaux, and Narvik. Some of them, uh, tactically bombed, some terror bombed, um, you know, devastating effect. Um, so this continued. Uh, this bomb. This bombing was the initial full-scale invasion of, of Norway. The main German land campaign, northward from Oslo, with superior equipment. Norwegian soldiers uh, with turn-of-the-century weapons, along with some British and French troops, uh, um, stopped invaders for the time, for a small time before yielding into surrender. First land combat action between British Army and Wehrmacht forces in, uh, in the Second World War, World War was here. <clears throat> so, first time in this war, the British Army and, Wehr and the Wehrmacht were in direct confrontation on land the first time in the Second World War. The Second Naval Battle of Narvik, Royal Navy versus Kriegsmarine, was on the, uh, the 13th of April. Land battles at Narvik, uh, Norwegian and allied French, French and even Polish forces under General Karl Gustav uh, Feistscher achieved the first major tactical victory against the Wehrmacht in the Second World War. And, the, and with the uh, evacuation of the king and the cabinet, uh, Narskovold and from Mold, uh, to Tremso on the 29th of April. Is this some, wait a minute here. So with that invasion, um, <clears throat> they evacuated the, 9th, the 29th of April, and the Allied evacuation of Anders Endels said Endelsnes on the 1st of May. Resistance in southern Norway comes to an end. So this is uh, some more of just of uh, different data um, of this this invasion. The last stand, Herger Fortress, resisted German attacks until 5th of May. Allied propaganda, uh, the importance, uh, of course, they've stressed the importance of the uh, victories at Narvik. Um, <clears throat> Norwegian army in, in mainland Norway capitulated, although the Royal Norwegian Navy and other armed forces uh, continued fighting the Germans abroad at home until the German capitulation or, uh, on the 8th of May 1945. On June, 10th of June 1940, two months after uh, Westertag, that made Norway uh, the occupied country that had withstood a German invasion for the longest time before succumbing. <clears throat> in the far north, Norwegian, French, and Polish troops supported by the Norwe by the Royal Navy and the Royal the Royal Air Force, RAF, fought against the Germans over the control of the Norwegian harbor uh, Narvik. Important for the year-round export of Swedish, uh, sorry, of uh, Swedish iron ore, the Germans were driven out of Narvik on the 28th of May. But the deteriorating situation on the European continent made the Allied troops um, withdrawal in Operation Alphabet on the 9th of June, and so that is when uh, the the full capitulation of Norway had happened. 
um, which was, uh, of course, the next day on the 10th of June, 1940. <clears throat> so the So the Germans recaptured Narvik, which was also now abandoned by civilians because of the massive Luftwaffe bombing. So finally, they had recaptured Narvik. So I'm going to go back to talking to the, about the first battle of Narvik and what, how it went down. Um, <clears throat> so in the early morning, 9th of April, the destroyers of Group 1 passed the, the West Fjorden and arrived at um, <clears throat> the off of the Fjorden leading up to Narvik in fog and heavy snow. The off the Fjord, um, in, in off the Fjord, they captured three Norwegian patrol boats, Senja, Michael Sars, and Kelt, before capture, before capture Kelt, uh, before the capture of the Kelt. Um, Kelt managed to send a message to the coastal defense ship and um, H-N-O-M-S Nord, awarding the local Norwegian naval commander of the incoming vessels. The German ships uh, Wolfgang Zenker, Erik Kollner, and uh, Hermann Kuhn landed their soldiers um, <clears throat> in Hedjans Fords, a northern branch of the Austin Jordan, uh, Austin Fjorden, sorry. In the northern part, uh, in order to capture a Norwegian regimental supply base at Overgrossman. Um, Hans uh, Woodman and uh, Hermann Kuhn also landed their troops in order to engage uh, the nearby um, Norwegian forts, uh, which turned out to be non existent. Dieter von Rather. Uh, remained in <clears throat> Ofatsfjord in order to ensure German control of the air of the sea. Air Grace was um, delayed by engine trouble and did not join the main force for some time. So this is some of the German movement. What I'm showing, what I'm uh, talking about here. The main defense of Narvik was the old coastal defense ships, uh, its Vold and Norg. Having been alerted by Kelt, both Norwegian ships uh, prepared for combat. The guns were loaded and life uh, preservers issued to the crew. By 0415, the Germans spotted uh, Esvold, um, and Esvold immediately signaled uh, the, the leading German destroyer um, with an eldest lamp, and then letting him know that this, that is exactly where they, uh, that, uh, they have been spotted. When the Germans failed to respond to the signal, a warning shot was fired across their across their bow. <clears throat> the day after the German invasion, um, the Royal Navy took an, an opportunity to defeat the Kriegsmarine, the second uh, destroyer flotilla under Commander uh, Bernard uh, was, uh, Warburton Lee and. Uh, uh, and comprising of five H-class destroyers, HMS uh, Hardy, which is the flagship, uh, Hotspur, Havoc, Hunter, and, Host and Hostile, moved up uh, the fjord in the early morning. The German destroyers, uh, Hermann Kuhn and Hans Wundermann, were anchored alongside the tanker Jan Willem and refueling, of course they were refueling, uh, ready for uh, further deployment. When the British destroyer attack began at 0430, the pocket, uh, the German picket ship, uh, Dieter von Reuter, um, had left its post to refuel, and as the British flotilla approached Narvik, they surprised, uh, they were surprised and engaged a German force at the entrance to the harbor and sank two destroyers. Well, uh, hate come killing uh, Commander Bolt and another commander, Anton Schmidt, heavily damaging uh, Dieter von Reiter and inflicting uh, lesser damage to two other ships. 
They also uh, exchanged fire with German invasion troops ashore, but did not have a landing force uh, aboard and therefore turned to leave. Before the destroyers left, they seen hostile fired um, hostile fired HMS Hostel fired her torpedoes at the merchant ships uh, in the harbor. In total, 11 merchant ships, six German, one British, two Swedish, and two Norwegian were sunk during uh, the British sortie uh, into the harbor. So here is some of the just more of um, pictures of the sinkings here. So the British flotilla was then engaged by three more German destroyers, Wolfgang Zenker, Eric Kohler, and, um, and Gase. Emerging from the uh, uh, Herjang's Fjord, led by Commander Eric Bay, and uh, then two more, uh, German Stale and Bernard von Ehren, uh, Ernhim, er, Ernhim, sorry. Uh, these, some of these names are hard to pronounce. Coming from Bowengan Bay, under Commander Fritz Berger, and that's the, their main commander, um, they engaged three more de German destroyers. In the ensuing battle, two British destroyers were lost. The flotilla leader HMS Hardy, which was beached in flames, and of course HMS Hunter, which was torpedoed and sunk. A third, HMS Hotspur, was also damaged badly by a torpedo. Hotspur and the remaining British destroyers led, uh, left the battlefield, damaging uh, George Thale as they did so. Um, the German destroyers, now short of fuel and ammunition, did not pursue, and the British ships were able to sink another about 8,460 GRT of ammunition and supply ships uh, of a supply ship. That's the weight of that supply ship, uh, the ammunition supply ship, Rinfels, which they encountered on their way out of the fjord. And so they, it's a attacking retreat. Soon the German naval forces were blocked in by British reinforcements, including the cruiser HMS uh, Penelope. During the night of uh, 11th and 12th of April, maneuvering uh, while maneuvering in Narvik Harbor, Eric Kohler and Wolfgang Zenkert ran aground. Uh, Zenkert damaged her propellers and was restricted uh, to a speed of uh, around uh, 20 knots. Kohler was much more badly damaged, and so the Germans planned uh, when she was repaired enough to move to more at uh, Terstedt as another... Um, other area on the on uh, nearby, in the same capacity as Ditter von Roeder, as an immobile defense battery. These could be used as a mobile defense battery, even though they cannot move. Their guns are still capable of doing some significant damage to um, any ships within range. As the British destroyers uh, left uh, Westfjorden outside Narvik, two German submarines. U-25 and U-51 fired torpedoes at them, but German torpedoes at the time had severe problems with their magnetic detonators, so sometimes they were duds. If they didn't uh, detonate on... Um, it's designed, the magnetic detonator is designed so that if it approaches the ship, it will detect uh, its proximity uh, to the ship's hull, the keel of the ship's um, hull, and it will detonate before it impacts um, thrusting the blast upward through the keel of the ship and could split the ship right in half. Usually it's a kill, depending on the size of the ship. That's what it's designed to do. It's designed to explode before impact with the force uh, ripping through the hull underneath. But uh, a lot of that, of course the T1s, the early torpedoes, uh, they had uh, severe problems. Being Some of them, many of them being duds, um, and basically just floating off uh, to the bottom, not detonating at all. So they would the, the best way to use them at the time would be to use their contact detonators. Uh, so they would have contact with the ship and then directly explode, blowing a hole through the uh, hull of the ship. Um, 
course, uh, this is possible. The problems they're having are possibly due to the north, high uh, northern latitude. All of them failed uh, and either did not detonate or at, uh, at all or detonated well uh, before their targets. So maybe even before they um, hit their ships, hit the ships as well. Both the German naval commander, Commodore uh, Friedrich uh, Bonn, um, on the uh, the, the Heidkamp, um, and the British commander, that's the ship, the Heidkamp, and the British commander, Captain Bernard um, Warburton Lee on Hardy, on the HMS Hardy, were killed in the battle. Warburton Lee was posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross. Bon, bon uh, was the, issued the Knight's Cross, uh, the Knight's Cross or the or of the Iron Cross. That's the German um, uh, the German equivalent medal. These are the commanders. Uh, so the Second Battle of Narvik. The Royal Navy considered it imperative for morale and strategic purposes to defeat the Germans at Narvik. So Vice Admiral William uh, Whiteworth was sent with the battleship HMS Warspite and nine destroyers, four tribal class HMS uh, Bedoin, Cossack, Punjabi, and Eskimo, and five others HMS Kimberly, Hero, Icarus, Forrester, and Foxhound, accompanied by aircraft from the aircraft carrier HMS Furious. These forces arrived at in the in the Alfred Fjord on. 13th of April to find um, that the eight remaining German destroyers, now under the command of uh, Frigate Captain uh, Frigate and Captain Eric Bay, were uh, virtually stranded due to lack of fuel and were short of ammunition. Before the battle, uh, Warspite launched its uh, catapult plane, a float plane, um, its ferry swordfish. Uh, L-9767, which bombed and sank U-64, anchored in the uh, Hergens Fjord near uh, <clears throat> Bergvik. Most and, and they sunk that. It was obviously anchored, an easy target. Most of the crew survived and were rescued by German mountain troops. This was the first U-boat to be sunk by an aircraft during the Second World War, and the only instance where an aircraft launched from a battleship actually sank a U-boat. And that ship is mainly meant to be a uh, a recon ship, a spotter. Um, it meant to be, that aircraft meant to be mainly a recon aircraft, um, lightly armed, but uh, meant to spot enemy, uh, enemy ships uh, within range. In the ensuing battle, three of the German destroyers were sunk by Warspite and her escorts, and the five, and the other five were scuttled by their crews. Where they ran out of fuel and ammunition, first to go was Air Kuhl, uh, Kölner, which tried to ambush the Allied forces, but was spotted by Warspite's uh, swordfish, and um, subsequently torpedoed and shelled by the destroyers and the battleship. The destroyer's commander, Alfred Schultz um, Hinrich, and the surviving members of his crew were captured by Norwegian forces. Then Wolfgang Zenker, Bern von Arn, Arn, bon Arnhem, Hans uh, Ludmann, and uh, Hermann Kuhn engaged the British forces, but only managed to lightly damage HMS uh, Bedouin. British aircraft from Furious tried to engage the German destroyers, but were unsuccessful. <clears throat> Two were lost. Wolfgang Zenker uh, torpedoed to uh, Wolfgang Zenker uh, tried to torpedo uh, HMS Warspite. Of course, uh, I'm assuming that they were unsuccessful. Finally, when the German destroyers were low on ammunition, they retreated, except for uh, Hermann Kuhn, which had not received the order. Hermann Kuhn was fired upon by the pursuing HMS es Eskimo. But she took no hits. Out of ammunition, but undamaged, Hermann Kuhn was scuttled by her crew in Trollvika. 
and a Hedgensfund, uh, uh, Hergensfjord, sorry, which is off of uh, Narvik. After scuttling the ship, the crew placed uh, demolition depth charges on the ship, attempting to sink her in uh, Trollvikr's shallow waters. Eskimo, in her hot pursuit, launched a torpedo, uh, launched a torpedo which hit Hermann Kuhn, setting her on fire. Which the German, uh, whether the German ship's own depth charges or the torpedo from Eskimo were the source of the explosion is unclear, but. Um, <clears throat> Certainly, uh, attempting to sink the sinker. That's going to still in hot pursuit. So heavily damaged. Were the German ship's own depth charges or the torpedo uh, from the Eskimo was the source of the explosion? It that was never uh, determined to be clear. Eskimo was in turn uh, ambushed by George Thale and Hans Luderman losing her bow, but surviving. And there is a picture of that somewhere. Uh, Dieter von Reuter and uh, Eric, Gr uh, Eric uh, Gais, uh, Ulrich's, Ulrich Gais, sorry, uh, both suffering engine problems, fired upon the British forces while still be trying, while still uh, docked, damaging Punjabi and Cossack. But they were both sunk before they could cause any further damage. That was the last German counterattack. Shore batteries and installations were also very badly damaged by war by its guns. On the Allied uh, side, the, the damage to HMS Eskimo uh, kept her in Norway until the 31st of May 1940. German uh, submarines uh, again suffered torpedo failures. When U-46 and U-48 fired at the departing war spite, on the 14th of April, luckily. The remaining German destroyers, Wolfgang Zenker, George Thale, Bernd von Ernem, and Hans Ludemann, uh, Ludemann retreated into uh, Rom uh, Rombach's fjord and were scuttled soon after. The only German ship which survived within the port area was... Uh, was the German submarine, the U-boat U-51. The Germans lost over 1,000 men, a U-boat, eight destroyers. With the losses from the previous battle, this consisted of 50% uh, of the Kriegsmarine destroyer strength. That's amazing. 50%. Major defeat. It was reported that Shipwrecked Germans uh, from Erich uh, Gais were fired upon by British artillery and machine guns during the engagement. About 2,600 survivors were organized into an improvised Marine infantry unit. The, big, the Gebrigs Marine and fought with the 139th uh, Gebrigs, um, the 139th unit. Uh, the hundred and nine men, men that uh, fought back. Uh, I'm reading some of this. Some of this, I'm trying to make sure it completely makes sense here. <clears throat> the Gibbers Regiment uh, in the subsequent land battle, and uh, of course, uh, that was the okay. That was Unit 139. Sorry. Um, Although unsuited for combat in the mountainous terrain around Narvik, the shipwrecked sailors manned the two 10.5-centimeter uh, guns, flat, and they were flat guns, and the 11 um, light anti-aircraft guns, salvaged from the ships sunk during the, na the naval battles, and conducted defensive operations. So they had to uh, do everything they can to push back. <clears throat> so these defensive operations were a last um, a last phase defensive operation um, these were last phase defensive operations 
The sailors were armed with the stocks uh, from the, the stocks captured at the Norwegian army base, so they used the uh, Norwegian force, Norwegian some Norwegian guns as well in the defense. And that was from base uh, Elfsgard Moon, Elfsgard's Moon. More than 8,000 Krieg Jorgensen rifles and 315 machine guns uh, intended for the mobilization of Norwegian army units in the uh, Narvik area, and then the Germans captured much of that. After the naval battles of Narvik, the port and its surrounding areas uh, remain in German hands, as no Allied force forces were available to be landed there. Naval operations were limited at this stage to shore bombardment, as Narvik was not a primary Allied objective. Among others, the Polish destroyers Grom, Burza, uh, Blaskowaka uh, took part in these operations, during which Grom was sunk by German aircraft on the 4th of May 1940, with the loss of 59 sailors. Here's HMS Warspite. That's a uh, um, uh, that that's the village old gallery. That's uh, HMS Warspite at the that's at the Second Battle of Narvik. This picture here. And here is uh, <clears throat> the Prime Minister of Norway. I believe it is. On the 9th of April, the Norwegian government moved uh, to Elsrum, believing that German uh, demands were, and of course they rejected them, and the uh, authorization from Parliament uh, giving the cabinet, of course they, they gave the, the emergency war orders, gave the cabinet uh, wide-ranging powers um, to, of course, move Parliament to prepare and to do the, of course, emergency war measures. This is the king, uh, this is the, here is the uh, king of Norway. During the Norwegian campaign, Narvik and its surrounding area uh, saw significant fighting. Initially, um, uh, from April 9th, between German and Norwegian forces, subsequently between Allied and German forces, conducted by the Norwegian 6th Division of the uh, 6th of the no Norwegian Army, as well as by um, an Allied Expeditionary Corps, until 9th of June 1940. Unlike the campaign in southern Norway, the Allied troops in Narvik would eventually outnumber the Norwegian troops. Five nations participated in the fighting. From the 5th to the 10th of May, the fighting in the Narvik area was the only active theater of land war in the Second World War. Really interesting at that time. And this is before, of course, the invasion of um, Belgium and Holland, and then uh, leading, going through the Ardennes and leading to the Battle of France. At the outset, the position of the German uh, commander, Dato, was not good. His 2,000 troops were outnumbered. After the German destroyers had been sunk, however, about 2,600 German sailors joined in the land battle, and capturing some uh, Norwegian uh, firepower as well. Another 290 German specialists traveled via Sweden, posing as healthcare workers. The German specialist. Interesting. I actually didn't know that. It was during the last three or two four weeks, um, the Germans were also reinforced by about a thousand men, airdropped over um, Jornsfjell, uh, thus bringing the total number of Germans to around 5,600. Their position and outlook changed uh, from good to dire several times. On occasions, the entire operation was controlled directly from the German high command in Berlin. Hitler's mood was reportedly swinging heavily, um, and he repeatedly, contempted, uh, he repeatedly contemplated withdrawal. <clears throat> in 
intelligence agents uh, captured later in the war also stated that Datil himself had been uh, considering crossing the Swedish frontier with his troops to be interned until the German agent uh, Marina Lee infiltrated um, Auchinleck's headquarters in Tromsø and obtained the British battle plan. However, the accuracy of this allegation has been questioned. The Norwegian force under Ger uh, General Carl Gustav uh, Fletcher, um, Fletcher eventually uh, reached eight to 10,000 men after a few weeks. <clears throat> The total number of Allied troops in the campaign in and around Narvik reached 24,500 men. The early phase of the invasion was marked by the German advance, uh, advantage of surprise. Sorry, German advantage of surprise. Norwegian troops in northern Norway had been called out on a three-month neutrality watch during the winter of 1939-1940, and so they had trained together. <clears throat> From 9th of April to the 25th of April, the Norwegian forces suffered three catastrophes. First, the forces protecting Narvik were unable to resist the Germans due to the commanding officer, um, the later NS Herd Commander Colonel Conrad uh, Sundlo, uh, refusing to fight the invaders. Second, around 200 soldiers from the Narvik garrison who had escaped capture were blocking the railway to Sweden and were caught by surprise while resting at, um, at Björnsfjell. Most of the men being captured, so they were resting there and most of them were captured. Third, IR-12, 1st Battalion of Infantry Regiment 12, sent to hold uh, Grantensbund, uh, Grantensbund, uh was attacked by surprise while in camp, suffering casualties that uh, ruined its spirits and effectively knocked out uh, the remainder of the, of course, they were effectively knocked out for the remainder of the campaign. Here we have German soldiers in, in Norway. I'm not exactly sure where, but um, they have current 98 rifles. These are um, uh, obviously of members of unit of uh, um, uh, High Command 31, uh, Unit 31. Um, and one of the major divisions landing in Norway. <clears throat> when the nature of the German invasion became apparent to the British military, it began to make preparations for a counterattack. Dissension among the various branches was strong, strong though, as the British army, after conferring with Otto Rug, uh, Rug Wait, uh, wanting, uh, of course, they wanted to assault Trondheim in central Norway while Churchill insisted on reclaiming Narvik. It was decided to send troops to both locations as a compromise. Admiral Lord Cork was an, in overall command of the Allied operation. <clears throat> after, a few, after the appointment of Rouge, uh, as commanding general on the 10th of April, the Norwegian strategy was to fight uh, delaying actions against the Germans advancing northwards from Oslo to link up with the invasion forces at Trondheim. The main aim of the Norwegian effort in eastern Norway uh, was to give the Allies enough time to recapture Trondheim and start a counteroffensive against the German main force in the Oslo area. The region surrounding the, Os, uh, the Osfjord, Oslo Fjord was defended by the 1st Division, commanded by Major General Karl Johan Eriksson. Eriksson, sorry, Eriksson. The, the rest of the region was covered by the 2nd Division, commanded by Major General Jacob um, of Linden, eh. Hivenden Hague, Hivenden Hague, having been prevented from mobilizing in an orderly fashion by the commander by the German invasion, <clears throat> he had he'd been pre having been prevented from mobilizing in an orderly fashion by the German invasion. Sorry, and improvised Norwegian units were sent into action against the Germans. 
Several of the units facing the German advance were led by officers, especially, sele uh, especially selected by Rouge, to replace commanders who had failed to show sufficient initiative and aggression in the early days of the campaign. The German offensive aimed at linking up uh, with their forces in Oslo and Trentham began on the 14th of April. With an advance north from Oslo towards uh, towards the, the Good Brand Downsons, uh, from Brandersdalen and Osterdalen Valleys, Hunfuss was the first town to fall to the advancing German forces. North of Hunfuss, the Germans began meeting Norwegian resistance, first delaying actions and later units fighting organized defensive actions. During intensive during intense fighting with heavy casualties on both sides, troops uh, of the Norwegian Infantry Regiment 6 um, Infantry Regiment 6 blunted the German advance at the village of uh, Hexbjong on 15th of April. The Germans only broke through the Norwegian lines at uh, Hexbjong the next day after employing Panzers for the first time in Norway. First time ever. Lacking anti-tank weapons, the Norwegian troops could not hold back uh, the German attack, which is obvious. <clears throat> it's just some more of the invasion here. Um, 3,000 troops of the 1st Division at Ostfjord evacuated across the Swedish border without orders and were in, in, interned by the neutral Swedes. The same day that the 1st Division began crossing into Sweden, the two Battalions of Infantry Regiment No. 3 uh, at Hilsten Moon Army Camp in uh, Kongsberg capitulated. The 3rd Division, commanded by Major General Inler, uh, Einer, Einer Lidgedal and uh, tasked with defending southern Norway, surrendered to the Germans uh, in Sist and Set Sidel on uh, 15th of April having seen no action up to that point. Some 2,000 troops marched into uh, captivity in the uh, Citadel capitulation with the uh, abandonment on the 20th of April of the Franco-British plans for recapturing the central Norwegian city of Trondheim. Rude's strategy became practically unfeasible. With the calling off of the Allied plans for recapturing Trondheim, British forces were which had been landed in um, Andelnes, uh, moved into eastern Norway. By the 20th of April, three British, half three British half battalions had moved as far south as Faberg, near the town of uh, Lillehammer. Main The br main British units deployed to eastern Norway on in April 1940 were the territorials of the 148th Infantry Brigade and the regular 15th Infantry Brigade. <clears throat> In a series of battles with Norwegian and British forces over the next weeks, the Germans pushed northwards from Oslo, their main effort uh, through the Gudbrandsdensvel uh, Valley. Particularly heavy fighting took place in, in places like uh, Tredden, uh, uh, Favang, uh, Finstra, Gvam, Stroa, and Otta. In the Battle of uh, Kvam on the 20, 26th and 20, 25th and 26th of April, the British managed to delay the German advance for two days um, <clears throat> of heavy fighting. Other German units broke through the uh, Valdres and Osterdale and Valleys in the former in the former case, um, after heavy fighting, and it, in the former case, after heavy fighting and an initially successful Norwegian counterattack, so that they were able to hold their line for a certain amount of time, but they were pushed back a few days afterward. Um, for the first time ever, the the Germans are really taking massive hits and are being slowed down by days, uh, days. Um, days and even weeks behind um, in the Norwegian campaign 
but with, of course, with the help of the British. The Royal Navy was uh, subsequent. They were certainly. Uh, it was a significant victory for them at the time. It had been complete de defeats from all the way from uh, Poland, uh, Denmark, um, certainly um, leading up to Norway. And then, first time ever, the, the Germans have gotten a bloody nose, certainly at uh, Narvik, in the Second Battle of Narvik. Losing half the the Kriegsmarine destroyers is a major was a major hit for them as well as this here is they're getting a lot more resistance from uh, Norwe Norwegians and British soldiers fighting fighting like side by side. So the capture of Western Norway, the most import the important Western cities of Bergen, Stavanger, and Stavanger were captured by the Germans on 9th of April. Some 2,000 German soldiers captured Bergen and captured the Norwegian arms depots there. The small Norwegian infantry forces in Bergen retreated eastwards, blowing up two railway bridges and sections of road after them. Despite the loss of the cities, the regional commander, um, General William Stephens, ordered a total mobilization. During, mi during mid-April, the 6,000-strong Norwegian 4th Division, responsible for the defense of the western, of western Norway, was mobilized around the town of Voss in, in, Hordor in Hordaland. Here's, a, here's, a night, here's an interesting picture here, uh, or pa picture, painting. JU-88's above. Um, Norwegians fighting along the line. Craig Jorgens, Craig Jorgens and rifles. Machine guns. The 4th Division was the only military district outside of northern Norway to be mobilized completely and in an orderly fashion. The soldiers of the 4th Division managed to repulse the initial German push along the Bergen Line railway line and, of course, Bergen Line railway line connecting western and eastern Norway. So, this is just more of uh, what happened in central Norway. <clears throat> I don't want to have to read all of it, because it is getting long here. You get the campaign, eventually, you know, um, you get you get the, the feeling, of course, it's going to, by June, it's going to be over. Here's a Stuka, Ju-87 Stuka dive bomber. The uh, merciful, these dive bombers are the certainly uh, famous for their uh, attacks on the, from all the way from Poland all through the war. They are in even uh, even bombing troops in uh, on Dunkirk uh, as British troops are trying to uh, retreat. So the original plans for the campaign in central Norway called for uh, a three-pronged attack against Trondheim by Allied forces, while the Norwegians contained the German forces to the south. It was called Operation Hammer and would land Allied troops in, at Nemsos to the north, uh, Marie's force. At Andelnes to the south, Sickle force, and around Trondheim itself, Hammer force. This plan was quickly changed, though, as it was felt that a direct assault on Trondheim would be too far, would be far too risky, and therefore only the northern and southern forces would be used. In order to block the expected Allied landings in Ob in uh, Oberkommando der Wehrmark, uh, the order, in order to block the expected la Allied landings by uh, the the OKW um, command, ordered a uh, Foskim Jagger company um, to make a combat drop on the, the railway junction in of Dumbas in the north um, of the Woodbrandsdale Valley. And so that's in central um, central Norway. The force landed on the 14th of April and managed to block the rail uh, and road network in central Norway for five days before being forced to surrender to the Norwegian army um, on 19th of April. <clears throat> uh, 
This is more just of the fighting in the central. The bombed out town of Stankover, uh, the Stankover, Stank, Stankcher, Stankcher. There, there. Thank you very much, Stankcher. So, uh, April twentieth of April, twenty ninth of April. The undefended port town of Christian San had been sound had been heavily bombed by the Luftwaffe. And was uh, the nearby port, and of course, as was the nearby port of Mold, which functioned as the headquarters of the Norwegian government and king. The town of, uh, of Elsund had also suffered he uh, heavily from German bombing during the last days of April. So on April 3rd of April, the Germans uh, advancing from Oslo and Trondheim and, and Trondheim in central linked up and then they pushed north. Organized Norwegian military resistance in the central and, and centered parts of Norway ceased on the 5th of May with the capitulation of the forces fighting at Hegra in Sor Trind Trindeleg and at Vinsjesvigen in, in Telemark. The failure of the central campaign is considered one of the direct causes of the Norway debate, which resulted in the resignation of British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain and the appointment of Winston Churchill to the office. So that was, yep, yeah, exactly. In the 5th of May, and that is soon, uh, of course, this will soon, uh, soon there will be, this will be linking up with, uh, so you'll hear a similar story of uh, what happened with Dunkirk as well, is uh, roughly, and this is, uh, this fighting is going along. This is uh, certainly the longest invasion campaign uh, in the early part of the war for the Germans. Because in May, in May and in, in June, of course, they're they're invading, um, begin the invasion of France. Uh, you know, they they're pushing through. So this is all going to link up with the other presentations I do. Um, having evacuated from Mold during German during German air attacks on the at, uh, 29th of April, King Hakon the Seventh and his government arrived in uh, Tromsø, in northern Norway, by 1st of May. For the remaining weeks of the Norwegian campaign, Tromsø, uh, Tromsø uh, was the de facto capital of Norway, as the headquarters of the king and cabinet. Here's uh, some some of the German troops in northern Norway. Northern in northern Norway, the Norwegian Sixth Division, commanded by General Carl Gustav Feistier, uh, faced the German invasion forces at Narvik. Following the German invasion, uh, German invasion, General Feister assumed the position of commander in chief of all Norwegian forces in northern Norway. The Norwegian counteroffensive against the Germans at Narvik was hampered by Feister's decision to retain significant forces in eastern uh, Finnmark to guard against a possible Soviet attack in the far north. So here's more of just uh, the fighting of, of the northern sector. So on the 15th of April, the Allies scored a significant victory uh, when the Royal Navy's destroyers, Rezon and Fearless, which were escorting uh, the troop-carrying convoy NP-1, forced the German U-boat U-49 to surface and scuttle in the, in the Vexfjorden. Found floating around uh, the sinking U-boat were documents detailing the dispositions, codes, and operational orders of all U-boats in the Norwegian operational area, providing the Allies with a a an efficient and valuable tool when planning troop and and supply uh, plan when uh, planning troop and supply convoys um, to the campaign in northern Norway. After the Allied failure in central Norway, more preparations uh, were given to the northern forces. Air cover was provided by two squadrons of carrier transport, uh, carrier transported fighters operating from um, 
Bardafoss Air Station. The re-equipped no, um, number 263 Squadron uh, RAF with um, Gloucester Gladiators and number 48 Squadron RAF with Hawker Hurricanes. As part of the, as a large part of the of the Allied counteroffensive in northern Norway, French forces made an amphibious landing at um, Bjorkvik on the 13th of May. The naval gunfire was from supported Allied warships destroyed most of the village and killed uh, 14 civilians before the Germans were dislodged from um, that town. While the Norwegian and Allied forces were advancing, advancing at Narvik, German forces were moving swiftly northwards through Nordland through leave uh, Dietl's besieged troops. The captured uh, Verne's air station near Trondheim was rapidly expanded and improved uh, to provide the Luftwaffe with, the, with a base from which to support the Narvik sector. As the German forces moved northwards, they uh, also gained control of the basic facilities at uh, Hetzdelcho Airfield to support their bomber operations. In late April, ten independent companies had been formed in Britain, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel uh, Colin uh, Gubins. On the 2nd of May, four of these companies were formed into a uh, scissor force under Gumens and, dis and dispatched to forestall the Germans at Bodo, another major, another city. Moe Rena and uh, Moe Stjorn, um, although they ambush, they although they ambushed the leading German units south of Moe Stjorn, they were outmatched by the German main body and were withdrawn to Bodo, uh, Bodo um, which was to be defended by the 24th Guards Brigade. As the 24th Guards Brigade moved to Bodo, the destroyer HMS Somali, um, which you see back behind, behind you there, which was carrying Brigadier Fraser, Brigadier General Fraser, <clears throat> was bombed and was forced to return to Britain. Gubins, with the acting rank of colonel, assumed command of the brigade. On the 15th of May, the troop ship uh, MS uh, Trubbery uh, carried the first Irish guards, was bombed with heavy casualties to the troops. And two days later, the cruiser HMS Effingham, uh, Effingham which uh, went aground while carrying much of the equipment of the Second South Wales um, Borderers, another unit. Um, both battalions were both re battalions returned to Harstead to reform and to be re-equipped before uh, setting uh, out again for border for another counterattack. So here's m just more of the more of what was happening here from Narvik to May 27th of May the border was bombed and straight by the Luftwaffe. The bombing raid destroyed recently constructed improvised and an improvised airstrip radio station and 420 of the towns 760 buildings killing 15 people and leaving a further 5,000 homeless in the process. So Operation Alphabet, the retreat, the Allied retreat of Norway. The general Allied retreat from Norway had been approved on the 24th of May. Among those who argued against evacuating Norway was Winston Churchill, who later expressed that the decision had been a mistake. The Norwegian authorities were only uh, informed of the decision on the 1st of June. After a meeting on 7th of June, at which the decision to carry on the fight uh, abroad was made. King Hakon VII, Crown Prince Olav, and the Norwegian cabinet left Norway on the British cruiser 
um, Devonshire and went into exile in the United Kingdom. Without supplies from the Allies, the Norwegian army would soon have, to, have been unable to continue the fight. Both the king and the crown prince had considered the possibility of remaining um, in Norway, but had been persuaded by the British diplomat Cecil Dormer to instead follow the government into exile. <clears throat> the crown prince suggested that he should remain uh, and assist the administrative um, council in easing the efforts of the occupation. But due to the king's old age, it was decided that uh, they both had to go into exile in order to avoid the complications should the king die while abroad. By 8th of June, after destroying rail lines and port facilities, an Allied uh, all Allied troops had been evacuated. The Germans had launched Operation Juno to relieve pressure on the Narvik uh, garrison and, after discovering the evacuation, shifted the mission to hunt and subsequently sink two British destroyers and the aircraft carrier Glorious. Bef before the British warships were sunk, however, the destroyer Acasta torpedoed and damaged Skornhost, the German battleship, uh, or German battle, heavy battle cruiser, rather. Shortly after the encounter, the, the British submarine HMS Clyde intercepted the German ships and torpedoed um, Jinsenau, causing severe damage. So the sister ship to the Skornhost was uh, had been um, severely damaged. So the Norwegian forces on the mainland capitulated to the Germans on the 10th of June, 1940. Units fighting on the front had been ordered to disengage in the early hours of, of uh, 8th of June. Fighting ceased at 2400, at um, 2400, or at 24000000, I'm assuming, on 9th of June. The formal capitulation agreement um, for forces fighting in mainland Norway was signed at the Britannia Hotel in Trudhelm at 1700 on the 10th of June 1940. Lieutenant Colonel uh, Vrig, uh, Regenwald Foster Nielsen signed for the Norwegian forces. Colonel Erich Bons uh, Buschenhagen for the German side. Buschenhagen for the German side. A capitulation agreement for the Norwegian forces fighting at Narvik was also signed the same day at Bjornstjell. At Bjornstjell. The signatures of this agreement, the last local capitulation of Norwegian troops during the campaign, were General Eldred Dito for the Germans and Lieutenant Colonel Harold Weird Helm for the Norwegians. The 62-day campaign made Norway the country to withstand a German invasion for the longest period of time aside from the Soviet Union. So, um, conventional armed resistance to the German invasion ended on the 10th of June, 1940. The Nazi and Nazi Germany controlled Norway until the capitulation of German forces in Europe on the 8th and 9th of May 1945. Throughout this period, Norway was continuously occupied by the Wehrmacht. Civil rule was effectively, uh, as <clears throat> effectively assumed by the Reichskommissariat, Norwegian Reichskommissariat uh, Reichs of Norway, which acted in collaboration with a pro-German puppet government, the Quisling regime, of course, while the Norwegian King Haakon VII and the pre-war government escaped to London, where they acted as a government in exile. This period of military occupation is in Norway um, referred to as the war years or occupation period. That's what it is referred to. German casualties. Germans wounded at Narvik being uh, repatriated to Germany on board the hospital ship Wilhelm Gustloff. The official German casualties for the Norwegian campaign totaled 
5,296. Of these, 1,317 were killed on land, while 2,375 were lost at sea. 1,604 were listed as wounded. The German losses at sea were heavy, with the sinking of one of the Kriegsmarine's two heavy cruisers. Right, and that would have been, uh, yeah, uh, the Scorn Host, I think. <clears throat> or is it Genesis? I'm trying to, uh, I'll, throw it, I'll take a look. One of them was sunk. Two of its six. Here's the Blatcher. The heavy cruiser Blatcher uh, was uh, sunk at the, on, of course, uh, early in the campaign off of, uh, yep, with the, as I mentioned before, from <clears throat> heavy, heavy Norwegian guns. So one of the, so the German losses at sea were heavy with the sinking of one of the Kriegsmarines. Two heavy cruisers, two of its six light cruisers, ten of its twenty destroyers and six U-boats, with several more ships severely damaged. The German surface fleet had only three cruisers and four destroyers operational in the aftermath of the Norwegian campaign. Amazing. Two torpedo boats and 15 light naval units were also lost during the campaign. The German battleship, the two German battleships and two cruisers were damaged during the campaign, and that's uh, that Skornhost and uh, um, Genesu, um, Jesenau. Hard time pronouncing that one. Um, Official German sources gave, give the number of German aircraft lost during the Norwegian campaign as 90. Others, assort, with other estimates, sources by historian Francois Cressandi ranging as high as 240. In transport ships and merchant vessels, uh, the Germans lost 21 ships at 111,700 tons, around 10% of what they had available at the time. Amazing. Norwegian and Allied casualties of the Norwegian campaign totaled around 6,602. The British lost 1,869 killed, wounded, and missing on land and approximately 2,500 at sea, while the French and Polish lost 533 killed, wounded, and missing. On the Norwegian side, there were around 1,700 casualties. Amazing, of which 860 were killed. Some 400 Norwegian civilians were also killed, mostly in German bombing raids. Of course, around 60 of the civilians killed were shot by German soldiers during the fighting in eastern Norway. Many in summary executions, reprisals. Um, of course, the Germans will launch uh, mass executions in order to uh, keep people in line and the fact that uh, and trying to push back and try to suppress any opposition, including uh, underground fighting. On the naval side of the Norwegian casualties, the Royal Norwegian Navy fielding 121 mostly outdated ships at the onset of the German invasion was vitally wiped, virtually wiped out during the campaign. Only 15 warships, including a captured German fishing trawler, with some 600 um, men, had managed to evacuate to the United Kingdom by the end of the fighting. The remaining Norwegian, uh, Norwegian uh, naval vessels were sunk in action, scuttled by their own crews or captured by the Germans. Among the warships sunk in action during the campaign were two coastal defense ships, and two destroyers. Seven uh, torpedo boats were also sunk or scuttled, while the remaining ten were captured by the Germans. Only one of the nine Norwegian submarines managed to escape to the United Kingdom, the other eight being scuttled or, or captured. Some 50 captured Norwegian naval ships uh, were over time pressed into service by the Kriegsmarine. 
The British lost one aircraft carrier, two cruisers, seven destroyers, and a submarine, but with their much larger fleet could absorb the losses to a much greater degree than Germany. The French Navy lost the destroyer uh, Bison and a submarine during the campaign and a cruiser severely damaged. The exiled Polish Navy lost the destroyer Grom and the submarine Orzel. While the British lost 112 aircraft during the campaign, the Norwegians lost all of their aircraft except a small number that were successfully evacuated to the United Kingdom or flown to, the neut to neutral Finland. <clears throat> the combined total loss of merchant ships and transports for the Allies, um, the combined loss of merchant ships and transports for the Allies and Norwegians was around 70 ships. The operation was planned as a, de a decisive victory for Germany. Both Denmark and Norway were um, caught on surprise. It was almost complete, and the surprise was almost complete, particularly in Denmark. And it was a very decisive win for, for Germany overall, despite their losses. At sea, the um, invasion proved a temporary setback. For the Kriegsmarine, the campaign led to uh, heavy losses, leaving the Kriegsmarine with a surface force of one heavy cruiser, two light cruisers, and four destroyers operational. This left the Navy weakened during the summer months when Hitler was pursuing plans for an invasion of Britain. The greatest cost of the campaign on land came in the need, in the need to keep most of the invasion troops in Norway for occupation duties away from the fronts. On the whole, the campaign was successful with great benefits for the victor. Alright, thank you very much.